Let's go to something a lot sweeter. Chocolate. The entire world loves chocolate, but as cocoa bean prices skyrocket, the ordinary bar of chocolate could soon become a luxury item. Prices are going through the roof, and here's why. African nations dominate the global cocoa trade. Cote d'Ivoire, Ghana, Cameroon, and Nigeria produce 70% of the cocoa beans consumed globally. But what is driving prices so high? Some farmers and insiders blame it on the wave of illegal gold mining. As a result, thousands of trees have been wiped out and many farmers sold their land. Before 2024, the historic high for cocoa sat around $5,000 per metric ton. This year, cocoa has traded as high as $12,000. And for the third year in a row, cocoa supply is expected to fall short of demand by about 8.5%. Next year, Another deficit looms as extreme storms and heat waves caused by global warming are damaging cocoa crops. So as the cocoa prices go up, companies are left with two choices. Reduce the size of their products or put up prices. And the true out outcome is probably both. Companies will have to accept lower profits and consumers will have to pay a higher price. And the days of cheap chocolate may soon be over. Now, let's bring in Tio Pong. He's an economist and political risk analyst, and he joins us and now live from Aberdeen, United Kingdom. A pleasure having you with us on the program. Good morning. So, Tio, we know some farmers in Cameroon are benefiting from soaring prices, and they call it a season cash. But in Ghana, on the other hand, cocoa farmers are suffering. Why such a huge difference? <laughs> Yes, indeed, we've seen prices at the global market uh, quintuple in re recent months. And definitely in Cameroon, uh, farmers have been benefiting. Uh, but in Ghana, it's actually quite a different dynamic because the farm gate prices are set and regulated by Cocoa Board, which is the government agency that um, uh, does uh, the price benchmarks. It does this using historical prices. Uh, but in Cameroon um, and other countries, what happens is that they're able to sell it directly to the market using various middlemen and brokers. That doesn't happen uh, in the case in Ghana. So relatively, you have a regulated market in Ghana um, and an unregulated market to an extent in Cameroon and other places. Hmm. Interesting. Given what's happening to the cocoa production landscape, can you help us understand, first of all, what's happening to the prices of, of cocoa? But also, do you think cocoa farming is still profitable? Yes, uh, absolutely. I mean, the price-driven um, increment in recent months uh, did not come too much as a shock for many market watchers for a number of reasons, uh, predominantly due to climate change, where a lot of the trees are aged. So in Ghana, on average, many of the trees are over 20 years. Then you've also got the uh, swollen shoot and the blackboard disease uh, that is affecting cocoa trees. And in most recent years, you've got the major issue of illegal mining that is affecting a lot of the, the tree crops. And then on top of this, you have historical underinvestment um, in the sector, and that is then driving a lot of the low productivity yields that we're seeing. So we did a survey recently amongst various farmers in, in Ghana, and on average, the productivity was around 457 kilograms per hectare. So that's around 11 bags a year that an average farmer uh, is harvesting. If you look at um, places in Latin America and um, in, um, in East Asia, mm. they are doing well over a thousand kilograms you know, per, per hectare. So predominantly, a lot of the farmers are um, farming cocoa for subsistence and not necessarily as a, as a commercial venture. Hence, many of them are still living below the poverty line. Do you expect these prices to keep rising? Or will they adjust at some point? It's very difficult to predict what's going to happen to prices, but what's your prediction? I think we've seen some recent correction in the in the market. Um, in the last couple of um, weeks, we've seen prices actually tumble by as much as 20% from the uh, close to $12,000 a ton highs that we've seen. And that's predominantly driven by 
and expected improvement in rainfall in the coming months that would improve our yields as well. But then the shortage that we've had in the market is unlikely to go away. So what that basically means is that we may not be talking at $10,000, $12,000 a ton, but probably somewhere around five dollars to $7,000 a ton range in the, in the coming months. And this is still relatively high compared to some of the prices that we've seen in recent years that have averaged around $2,000, $2,500 a ton. All right, Theo Archempong, thank you very much for your analysis. Thank you.